Nation, we got a goodie tonight. Shout out to everybody already in the building. We see you, man. Salute, salute, salute. I am here, Oak Las Vegas Raiders Network, with my big brother, Wasted Talent. What's going on, bro? Oh, man, I'm excited, brother. I'm excited, man. What a good night to talk Raider football, man. Yeah, man, facts. And we have, you know, a former first-round pick of our Raiders. Everybody in the chat, man, make sure you show some love to our guy, um, good man, just a good brother in real life. You know what I'm saying? Like, like extraordinary human being, man. Got a chance to uh, kick it with him yesterday. Um, he had this little workout with my son, man. It was hilarious, man. Elijah literally almost passed out, bro. Like he was in the car yesterday. He damn near fell asleep in the back seat, bro. We live five minutes away from the park, bro. His ass was in the back. I was like, oh my God, bro. You know what I mean? He's done. But hey, real quick, man, everybody in the chat, man, give it up for our guy. You know what it is, man. Once a Raider, always a Raider. Yes, sir. You already know what it is, man. Our brother. Gary, i man. What's good, bro? What's up, man? Definitely once a Raider, always a Raider. There Go we that. have it, man. So, hey, so we was kicking it yesterday. I know you, you back in Houston now, right? Yeah, I'm in Houston. How, how's it feel to be back home? I know I know you you missing the family and stuff. I know you out here rehabbing on yeah. your way back to the NFL, man. How's it feel to be back home with the family, man? Oh, real good. I, like I said, I come back every uh, weekend to be with the fam and uh, actually train my stepson and his teammates and my players out here. We actually got a good ass workout in this morning, and I was feeling like Elijah this morning because I actually did the workout with him. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, they're hurting, bro. I'm I love man. it, man. And, and for those who do not know, like I seen Khan yesterday, he's in great shape. Pause if necessary. He is on his way back. 27 still, man. About to be 28 this month. Yeah, man. Still young, young, bro. Like, yeah, like, up, man. Kind of, you got us out here looking old, bro. Like, yeah, we, we 40s and shit. You know, like, <laughs> that's just crazy, man. You know what I mean? But, all right, I, I'm going to fire off a few questions, right? We're we going to start this off light, all right? Yeah. Simple and plain. Pac or big, man? Uh, I was just, it's crazy. I did a podcast literally, like, 30 minutes ago. I never listened to Biggie before, ever. I listened to a couple, you know, the mainstream songs I heard of, but I never listened to them. So I gotta go. Wait, wait, see, you heard that? So, I so, so. Go so. See, see, right no, now we're the negative already, Con. We're the negative already, bro, for the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm from Northern California. My brother's yeah. from New Jersey. So I, I love this. All right, look, look. Nas or Jay? Jay Z. Come on. Love it. In, in and out or Whataburger? What a bur in and out is so trash, bro. Oh my <laughs> thank you. In and out oh, is so overrated, bro. That shit is disgusting. It's one thing on the menu. You get a burger, <sighs> you get a burger with the spread. That shit is disgusting. <laughs> like I, I knew we couldn't be 100, you know, this whole time. I know we was gonna miss out on something, all right. But I ain't gonna lie, the mushroom Swiss is fire at Whataburger, though. That's that's the joint. Yeah. All right, yeah. you from Ohio. Yeah, bone thugs or Wu Tang. I never really listened to Wu Tang, so I'm gonna go bone thugs. <laughs> oh. Look, I get it though, bro. Listen, man, you, this man was born in 1995. Yeah, I this man was born in 1995. He listen, man. I listen to 90s music though, but I just I, I, I I'm like real particular on what I listen to. Come here. La, la, he, he said he wants to say what's up real quick. Say what's up. What's up, bro? How you feeling? <laughs> bro, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something. His legs uh, noodles today, man. Not 
<laughs> Bro, it's funny, man, because, you know, I was thinking to myself today, you know, Graf was telling me that you're still 27 years old. And I was like, damn. Yeah. I was thinking, because my nephew was 27, and I'm like, I said, damn, I was in high school when he was born, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yo. <laughs> like, I'm like, damn, I'm getting old, bro. So, look, I don't look, I don't fault you, brother. All yeah. that stuff was going on when you were first born, bro. I don't even fault yeah. you, my brother. All right, All here's right. one for you right here, Con. Yeah. Urban Meyer or John Gruden? <laughs> That's easy. That's Herb, for sure. I did not fuck with Gruden. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I like how you responded to that, okay? Because yesterday yeah. we had a conversation yeah. and we talked a little bit about, you know, um, coming into the NFL, your situation in Oakland, uh, yeah. you know, and, and so on and so forth, right? And yeah. you told me, you know, this story low-key about, about Gru, right? And and my yeah. mind, do I know you on your journey back in? If, there, if we can't talk about certain things, you let us know because we do not want to affect you know yeah. your, your journey back into the league, bro. Like that, yeah. that that's that comes first. Yep, for sure. You can speak on this because grew out now. He ain't, he's yeah, no longer. I ain't worried about, bro. <laughs> yeah. So you told me a story yesterday, bro, about yeah. about basically. Go, go ahead, man. What happened? In the warm up. Well, I told you in the warm up. Yes, in the warm up. Yeah. So we in the warm up uh, practice. This is uh 2019. Is this 19. I think it was no, no, no. It was 18. I think. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it had to be 18. No, actually, but I don't know. It was either 18 or 19, but I know it was when Eli got traded to the Saints. Eli I Apple. remember Von Bell was already there. Marshawn mm -hmm. was already there. Lattimore. Then my dogs from Ohio State. Yeah. Of course, Mike is there already. And it was one more person. I remember I couldn't tell or I couldn't remember who it was. But yeah. I just remember another person went to the Saints. We in the warm up and Gruden come up to me like, yeah, I see your boys is all at the Saints. You want to go over to the Saints with them? And I just look at him like, like what? Where would that come from? Like, what you what you mean, bro? Like, why are you even? Mind you, this is a warm up of practice. Like, why are you even talking about that to me before practice? I'm trying. And to this is practice. year two in your yeah. career. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I'm like, why are you talking to me about that before practice? One. And then in my head, I'm thinking like trade deadline around this time. You know what I'm saying? All this stuff going on. I'm not starting, and then I start some games. There's a lot going on with me, uh, Melvin, Worley switching out, and all this shit. Yeah. And I'm just like, I never hit my agent up about wanting to trade. I've never told anybody I wanted to get traded. I didn't want to get traded at yeah. the time or none of that shit. But if I did, I would have been happy as well at the same time because I didn't fuck with Gruden or Paul Gunther at the time. Yeah. So that comes out, whatever. And then he like, yeah, uh, you, you starting this week, though, ain't you? And I'm just like, nigga, you the head coach. Like, I don't know how I'm starting. Like, am I? And that's what I said. I said, am I starting this week? Because I didn't start last week. And yeah. Like, so I was like, am I starting? He was like, yeah. He was like, but I'm like, you asking me am I starting? Like, should I know? Like, but why is that even a question again? Like, why are we even having this conversation right now? Just weird energy. And just kept saying like, yeah, do you sure you don't want to go over there with, the, with your boys at the Saints? And I'm just like, bro, that's corny as hell. So then I remember in practice, uh, Paul Gunther just just on the same type energy. Like, you 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 like it here? You 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 sure you you like the energy? You like the play calls and you like what we doing here? You sure you don't want to leave or go anywhere else? And I'm just like, bro, no. Like I never said none of this shit. Why is any of this shit coming up? But then I told bro yesterday. I said I remember when I told Jim O'Neill, he's the coach, the DB coach at the time. Like, I don't really. Fuck with Gruden and Gunther like that. Like, not saying, like, as it's beef type shit, but I just don't fuck with them like that. I don't like the way they yeah. do shit. I don't like the way the coaching. And I just remember Gunther was telling us all, like, uh, I want all my corners to look the same. And da -da -da -da. like, I remember one time in, in camp, we was going over film. And uh, I don't know if it was me or if it was another corner. I remember he had threw, like, a quick jam or something, and he wanted us to motor. But he threw the quick jam. He paused it. He just started going off like, I don't like this shit. This isn't what we want. I want all my corners to look the same. This, this is that. And I'm just like, bro, like, one, you shouldn't have all your corners look the same. Yeah. It's, if I'm a 6-1 corner and you got a 5-8 corner or 5-10 corner, we're going to play different. If I'm a faster corner and you got a slower corner, we're going to play different. If I'm good with my hands or better with my feet and he's good with his hand about we're gonna play different you know what i'm saying yeah. everybody got different techniques and styles yeah you teach tools and technique for us to use at the time where we need them but we're not all supposed to look the same 
So yeah. I, right off rip from camp, I didn't agree with that. And I know a lot of the DBs in there didn't agree with that. So it was always already just a little tension there with it. And then I just remember him saying that shit on the field. Like, you want to leave? You like what we're doing? And I'm just like, no, nah, I really don't. But I remember telling Jim, like, I don't really fuck with them, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. the only way I could take it as them coming to me randomly in practice with the shit is Jim O'Neill told them, like, yo, Gary, yeah. I don't fuck with y'all. Like, corn balling. That's the only thing shit, that, right? Yeah. That's so, only so you can't speak your mind as a man. Yeah. And what's crazy, I told, I said, I told both of them to their face, like, I don't. <laughs> like, yeah. I, it's true. And I would have told them, but it's just like, why, why is it coming from you to them? Why, like, I could have told him myself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I thought it was a safe place because she act like you my, my dog, you know what I'm saying? Why are you going back saying anything? You know so th saying? that shit makes no sense, right? But yeah. it's making no sense. Let me ask you this. Explain yeah. pa Pauly G's defense to us real quick. Because <laughs> it I sense. look at it, right? I'm like I'm like, how does this shit make any sense? Like, like. And, uh, and every was, player that's come out when he, whenever he left was like this shit yeah. completely. Everybody it was just lost. Bro. It don't. It's it's a new game plan every week. Uh, we got hella calls. It was crazy. Some of the shit he has, it could work. We just don't work it enough. And we got hella calls, and we trying to make plays off of like what the offense is doing. Like yeah, you know, offense is just so we gonna get beat every time we find out what they doing and make a play off of that. Calling defense is just off plays. Like we need to master the shit that we know and do the shit that we do, and then have a couple other calls for other shit. But it's just like everything's changing. We got hella installs this week, this week, and then we practice all of it, and then we end up running like three of the calls in it. So why do we practice all that shit? Like it's just, it's just too much going on for me, bro. Yeah, I, and then, I mean, and like I, I said, it can't play the way I want to play as well. I, I've always heard that Paul Gunther. I, I, I didn't mean to, to cut in, but I've always heard that Paul Gunther and John Gruden were like play play whores. Like they mean? got, they were so enamored with having a lot of verbiage, having a hundred thousand yeah. plays. Yeah. And so much shit. <laughs> it's just, just just too much. And what what I never could understand was, you know, your rookie season, you had some injuries, right? Yeah. In your second year, you had a phenomenal season, man. Yeah. Phenomenal yeah. year. And I yeah. didn't even start half some of them games or I didn't play I didn't play the fourth quarter of the first like three games because they were switching people out and didn't want to keep me in if I got a ball caught on me or all type of shit. Yeah, yeah. So so okay, so you have that. Then you go to 2019. Yeah. And I played bad. They, they start playing all of this bullshit. They start doing all of this bullshit. They they, yeah. they go get to Marcus Worley and they're they're they like kind of platooning you guys. Daryl Worley, Daryl Worley. Yeah, yeah I got some Demarcus. A <laughs> goofy motherfucker. No, wait, wait. Uh, no, wait. hey, there, there is a Demarcus yeah. Worley in the National Football League. I, I, yeah. I'm, you know, a lot of these guys. I'm getting old, yeah. but and and then and then I remember, you know, Jonathan Abram, like yeah. kicking you in the head, kind of being out of control, and you having the concussion and being out. Yeah, I remember that season. Yeah. What I could never understand was, you got a homegrown guy that was not picked by this regime, was picked by Reggie McKenzie, but. Mm -hmm. First round pick, 6-1, fast corner, a guy who shut down Antonio Brown and Tyreek Hill. Yeah. Right? And then you go out and you bring in some more young corners. So I'm like, okay, we cooking with gas here. You got yeah. Khalil Mack. They get Man, rid of Khalil Mack. got a whole good-ass team, bro. Yeah, like you get rid <laughs> of the whole Mark team. Cooper. <laughs> I, I just – how did that Good feel bro. when they started getting rid of these guys for you guys? Man, like how, Man. what were you guys thinking when that happened? So the older players already know what's up. This is when I start learning the league more. So anytime a coach, anytime a new coach is hired, he's bringing his coaches in who he wants, and he's bringing his players in who he wants, and he's getting rid of all the last players, basically. Mm -hmm. So everybody that's getting drafted by McKenzie and Del Rio, he's trying to get up out of there for real. And it's like, yeah, he may give you a shot to try to prove yourself, but – if he don't like it, he just going to try to find a way to get you out of there. So all the people just start leaving. And we just like, damn, it's really like what the older people were saying. Like once a new coach come in, damn, to everybody that's from the last coaching staff uh, and players, they gone. So what's crazy is uh, I remember we had a team meeting 
because you remember uh at that time they was like Gruden's tanking the season for first round picks and all that yeah. shit was going on in the media. Yeah. He had a meeting, he putting all the tweets and shit up there on the on the board. He like this rumors going around that I'm tanking the season for first round picks and da da da. da. He said, "Don't believe none of that bullshit." Blah blah. blah. Next week, Mari Cooper gone, first round pick. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, what the fuck? I think it just said like he wasn't doing that shit. Like, Literally, like I'm telling, I don't even think it was. I think it was the same week. Like yeah. literally, we was in warm ups. Again, I feel like warm ups was when shit just pop off. We in warm ups, and they called Cooper. He just gone. They like Mark Cooper got traded for a first round pick. We like, bro, he just had a team meeting and said he wasn't doing that. <laughs> like, what you talking about? Right. Like, and, and, but, and 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 you in the NFL when you see that type of shit, like, does that have? Yeah. Does that put something in your head? Like when you go to Houston, right? Like, can you? Yeah. Do you already have trust issues, like 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 in the sure. NFL, like because yeah. it's tough, right? You you like I went yeah. here, I got drafted here by this uh-huh. regime. Reggie gets yeah. out of there, you know, you know, well, you know, it was Del Rio and Reggie, but you know, what I mean, like you go from Grew to the situation, and, and we'll talk about the Texans, but like, yeah, does that like psychologically like just take you out of like like bro, like can I trust anybody in this business? Not the league yeah. business. Yeah. At the end of the day, you're starting to realize it's a business now. Yeah, it's definitely like I said. I started realizing that my second year and third year. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I just took it more as yes, yeah, trust issues. But I took it more as like treating it just like a business, like yeah. how you do it corporate America. Like you're gonna uh-huh. put your all in. You're gonna go to work. You're gonna go hard. But you know, you can't be all in a hundred percent as you as a person. Like thinking yeah. like just good with your boss or your teammates, your coworkers, whatever. So. I mean, like I said, when I was talking to you the other day, like it's some guys that I get close with, but that's just based off us building a genuine relationship and we just yeah. end up coming close. But everybody else treat it like a business. Ain't no beef, but it's just like that. Yeah, shout out to the guys too. And we were talking about Markel Lee yesterday, another guy that a lot yeah. of us really believed in. And then yeah. poof, yeah. you know long. what I mean? It's like, damn, bro. Like like we feel like once we get, we, 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 we get shit moving, it's like the next thing you know is- Yeah, bro. It, it was a, it was a real toxic situation up there, bro. Like like I told you, bro. Like yeah. I literally didn't want to be there, bro. And yeah. it's like this is what I love to do. I didn't want to go in the building. Like I yeah. used to. I told him <laughs> yesterday, like, bro. Yeah, like, that's crazy. My son lives across the country in Michigan. Like, yeah. I would I would call a coach or text coach or somebody. Like, yo, my son's sick. Like, I can't come in today. My son don't even live with me. I live in California. He live across the country, but I'm making up excuses so I don't got to go in the building. Yeah, like, that's that's, that's the point it got to. And I was like so happy that I got traded, bro. And I told him too, like, bro, like I have nothing against the Raider, the Raiders organization or the fans. Like I love the fans, love the organization. It was just that staff. Yeah. I love the staff that brought me in. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I love Reggie McKenzie and my defensive coaches that brought me yeah. in. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was just that staff with Gruden and like I just didn't fuck with it. And then I tell people like, because people be saying like, oh, coaches don't have that effect on players. Like it's all on the player. Like a program really could fuck you up mentally. Like, because yeah. I tell people like I had my worst eight games in my career in 2019 with the Raiders, and I had my best eight games in my career the same season with the Texans. Yeah, but it wasn't. I was the same player. It just was about the situation I was in, bro. That shit's crazy, man, because you go from 2018 having three picks. And I yeah. believe, was that the same year or was it the following year? You had to pick six against Baker Mayfield in Cleveland, right? Same year, 2018. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so 2018. Yeah. Then, then you go out to Houston and, you know, yeah. it's crazy because the first game you go, you go out there and you're facing us. Yeah. <laughs> first game as a Texan, boom, you're playing your former team. How, how did that feel? Going into man. that game, were the emotions high? Were you like, I really want this one? Or like, bro, like how'd you feel? Man, the emotions was crazy, bro. Like, I ain't gonna lie, that was probably one of the most like mixed emotion games I had in my life. Cause like, mind you, I got traded on Monday. I played that Sunday, started. <laughs> when I ran out of the tunnel, that's when it really hit me. My fucking chest felt like heavy as fuck. I was just so geeked, but at the same time, I was just like, damn, like, I got to make sure I play good, thinking, like, I got to do extra shit. I got to be, like, this immaculate corner today just because yeah. of what they did, you know what I'm saying, thinking of resent and revenge and all that shit. But then once I got in the game, I remember 
I think it was Roby. It was either Roby or J. Joe. They told me like, yo, I know this your old team, but don't don't play for revenge. Like just play your game. And then that's yeah. kind of what calmed me down. And I didn't have like the best game, but I did decent and we won. And I made yeah. them there the, the game win the play on defense. So yeah, I remember that. Bradley Roby, another guy that you play, you played with. In, no, he well, he was there. At his Ohio State my guy, freshman right? year. Yeah, my freshman yeah. year, I mm-hmm. registered it, and he was uh, that was his last year. Shout out to Robe. That my, that's my boy Twan's first cousin. Man, I rock with Robe. He a good dude. Yeah. Um, uh, a shout to uh, Brandon Jasper. He just shot a five dollar donation. Look, I, this is what I love about Khan. He he real. He said, "Look, I don't know yeah. shit about what's going on in the NFL right now, player wise." I don't know the rosters, no none of that. He's like, I'm just working on getting back to the to the game. So yeah. I'm, I'm letting y'all know now. If y'all want to ask questions about, you know, what, where you where he thinks the Raiders are right now and all the other, look, you don't yeah. even waste your time, family, because yeah. look, our guy is on a mission right now to get back in the league and get back to playing yeah. at a high level, man. So just letting y'all know now, you know, what I mean, kind of, he, he ain't worried about that shit. <laughs> so, you know hey, Kyle, let me ask you a quick question, bro. You know, because. Yeah. You play for Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer is a legend in college football. You know, he yeah. he kind of has a weird reputation now in the National Football League yeah. for what happened yeah. now with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah. You know, and, and I know it's like a factory at Ohio State. Yeah. What was it like being at Ohio State and then coming to the to, to Gruden's madness? Yeah. It, like, like, was it more of a professional and, and like a kind of together vibe at Ohio State? Like, yeah. was that – because like, it seems like from what I'm hearing, it was like a shock to the system to play under all of that chaos in, in Oakland. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um I think a lot of colleges is like that. I feel like everybody come close because the grind is different in college because like you with your brothers and shit, you damn near, you with the coaches all the time too. Uh but y'all just grinding together, y'all doing everything together. You're going through winter workouts, mat drills, spring, summer workouts, spring ball, summer runs, fall camp, the season. So you're just going through that for three years minimum and then some four years like I did. And it's just that that brotherhood is different. And like I said, we in the locker room, we talk for about two hours after a workout, like we chilling in the locker room. Like you don't get that in the league. You get some people that you talk yeah. to. But just think about the league. When you go to the league, it's like after the season, you ain't there. It's off season. You go and do it with your own. You got your family. You go train on your own. You go train with players from college, you know what I'm saying? You keep that brotherhood with them, but it ain't the same there. Yeah. And then I feel like the culture at Ohio State, I can't speak for every school, but I feel like all the bigger schools in college, the culture is just – the standard in the culture is just like brotherhood, respect, and everybody got that common goal and just working together. It's no selfishness. It's no egos. And really, the coaches – I mean, from Coach Meyer's standpoint – he gonna get rid of all of that shit. He getting rid of all the cancers. He tell you the first day you walk in there, like we getting rid of all the cancers, all the egos, and they damn near try to make you quit. So everybody that you rock with on the field, shit, even the backups, like them the ones who made it through all that shit and had to let that shit go if they had egos. So yeah, it's it's building a different relationship. And I feel like going from there to the league, it's like it was the opposite of what I thought. Like I'm yeah. thinking. When I go to the league, it's gonna be this times two, and it really was minus one. Like you go yeah. into the league, it's a business. Like you fighting for a job to feed your family. Some people got kids, some people got wives. You know, house, mortgage, all this shit. So like, yeah, you might not be as close with that dude as you was with the dude in college. Because, for example, I'd be telling my players like, me, Marshawn Lattimore, Dizzo Ward, my last year. Mind you, I'm the returning starter. Yeah. We're for a spot. But they're my best friends still to this day. But it's yeah. just like, how can you really compete with a dude like that and be that close? But it's just a understanding the grind, and we knew it made us better. If I go to the league and I got a two-year, three-year-old vet or 10-year vet, and I'm trying to compete for that spot, it ain't going to be that same connection. Because yeah. he trying to feed his family. He feel like he deserved more. Or even a rookie that come in when I'm there, they feel like they deserve my spot and – it might be a little ego there or something because we don't really know each other like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a difference in that. And then the coaching standpoint, I mean, it just depends on how they run their program. Like, Gruden, I don't feel he ran his program the way that Coach Meyer would and keeping everybody accountable, being honest, and just being a real person. So yeah. 
it's definitely different for sure. Let me let me ask you this, man. So, you know, one thing I love about you is you're very transparent, right? You you're honest about your story. You know, we yeah. all know, you know, former first round pick. Um, you know, you know, Kenzie, you know, took a shot. You know, after all the crazy allegations, right? Yeah. Um, and, and everybody in the nation knows about you know all that shit, right? The the whole uh, the whole you know yeah, rape, 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 rape and all the other shit, shit right? So yeah. I have to ask you this. You know, I, I talked to you about this a little bit yesterday, right? Um, uh -huh. that shit was cap, you know, you ended up, you know, winning it or whatnot. Right. And yeah. the jury ordered the woman to pay you $300, right. <laughs> yeah. Including a hundred dollars in punitive damages. Right. As well as yeah. your attorney fees. Yeah. So, so you came out of this situation with $400. What did you do with that $400? I don't even know if I really even spent it or what I did. I don't know where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now that you know you don't remember what you did with that four hundred dollars, what yeah. did you do with the first bag that you got in the NFL being drafted? What did I do? Uh, I want to say I bought a car, but I don't even know if I bought that shit first. Uh, <laughs> I bought I bought an Audi R eight. I want that okay. was my dream car. Like I bought that bitch. Uh, but I don't know if I bought it before or after. Honestly, my first thing of what I think I did was uh go on a trip to Miami. I took all my homies from uh Canton, Massillon, where I'm from. I took them all to Miami. I told them, just get your flights, whatever, however you got to get there. You'll travel. I pay for everything. I pay for sections, fucking jet skis, chef, oh, Airbnb. Like, we, we kicked it, for sure. Ah, I love that yeah. shit, bro. Because I know, see, th this is the great thing about us now being in Las Vegas, right? We were talking about yeah. this yesterday, Con, about Playing in Oakland, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, you're a first round pick. Yeah, you're getting first round money. Yeah. But are you getting first round money living in the Bay Area? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> you know what oh, I mean? No. Like they've been pretty much taking half your bread out there, right? Yeah. Like 51%. For sure. So so when you see guys in the NFL now, right? The Raiders play in Las Vegas. I think that's a huge, huge no state tax. What? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good thing, right? There's Nashville, there's Arizona, there's, yeah. earth, there's certain states Florida. Like, Florida. Texas. Florida. Yeah, that's 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 major for us now, right? When it comes to, to in terms Hell of yeah. the free agents and all that. Okay. Yeah, 13% state tax, bro. Yeah. Uh, California, that's crazy. They taking at least three bands out of your check every trip. Just off the state. <laughs> then you gotta add on federal to that. Then that they got the little Medicare crazy. and all that shit. That shit. I was looking at I was like, I didn't even know all these taxes existed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to Alex real quick, man. He asked you a question. G, who were your biggest mentors in college and in the NFL as well? Shout out to Alex, man. Uh, college, shit, Roby, um, Duran Grant, um, my cousin Devin, uh, Devin Smith. He was a wide receiver, but okay. he went to the same high school. I've been looking up to him. He's been always like helping me. Um, them, Tyrus Powell, all the all the older DBs. Honestly, I'm Arnie Reeves, but in the league, I would say. Reggie Nelson for sure. Okay. Uh, uh, what's crazy is like, so it's funny. Like Sean Smith, you know everybody. Everybody sees Sean Smith. Like, he, no, I'm he, sorry, like, I love Sean Smith. Uh, like, I do too, man. That's my that's dog, my dog, bro. Like when I tell you, like, dude, like he always showed me a good time. You know what I'm saying? We gonna kick it. Like I remember my first game. We played the Jets my rookie year. So I didn't play in the first game. My first game actually playing was the Jets. The second game. Yeah. Right after the game, we took a PJ. My first time on a PJ, he just got the PJ. We go to LA, go kick it. Like right after the game, make it yeah. back to meetings the next day. Like, <laughs> I'm like, whoa, like he's showing me a good time. But like, but dude always was still, <clears throat> and like he wasn't doing that good that season. But yeah. it was a lot of shit going on with them too. But dude always was like, still school me on like film, like how to watch film, how to do this, like telling me shit at practice, like what to read, like. Always and then even just boosting me up, like nigga, you that nigga, like always yeah. on that shit. Like, so I, I really looked up to Sean, like, as far as that, just the way he handled and always was a real dude. Uh him, Reggie Nelson, Reggie was my dog. He always was just schooling me. Yeah. And when Leon Hall came over there, like he, Leon. Leon was somebody oh, I'm always trying to be around and learn from. Uh yeah. all the older, like the older vets, like when I came in, them was the ones. That I was yeah. always trying to be around the older DBs. Who who who'd you pack? Go go ahead, Wasey. 
um, real quick, you know, we have a lot of uh, people in, in, in the Raiders that were like legends. And I, and I know the Raiders, more so than other organizations, have players that were playing and who had legendary careers well before you were born, well before I was born, Grav was born. Yeah. Did you guys have a lot of interaction with, with guys like that? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, Willie Brown, um, um, Lester Hayes. Like, I mean, they, um, were, they were coming to every practice, like teaching yeah. this shit all the time. Uh, yeah. What's the name? Uh, even uh, Rob Woodson. Like, I yeah. looked up to him, and my job was only with him for one year, but like, I looked up to him just because, like, he would literally come in meetings and he would always, like, give us a quote or, like, just something before, like, something about life before he even talked about football. And that's yeah. how I knew he was real. Like, he, he was taking away football before we even started football. And then he'd get into it. Uh, I wish they would have let him actually coach and be himself. Like, yeah. My dude played. So, so you think he was successful? They didn't allow him to be himself? No, definitely not. Uh, I remember when we got there, when I got there, I mean, uh, he would tell me, like, Yo, if any of these coaches, like, tell you this, tell you that, he said, just nod your head, and you always yeah. listen to me. And I'm just thinking, like, wait, what do you mean? Like, and then I started to see it, like, Del Rio would come in our meetings, or Pagano, and they would just, like, say shit, or, like, coach, or just do this, and, like, wouldn't even let him coach the way he wanted to coach. And I remember, like, him telling me, like, just anytime they do anything, you just – act like you listening and he's like I'm gonna I'm a coach you I'm a so I always listen to him we always had like our own meetings and stuff uh and then I remember when he then when Gruda came in he said they don't make me the head secondary coach I'm done coaching and he yeah. did it that's when he stopped coaching and that, now he's coaching out here uh he, he oh, yeah, out here. yeah yeah uh with the uh was it the Renegades the, the XFL team yeah I think they just won a championship right yeah the, was it Arlington Arlington, yeah, because yeah, 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 because Mar Marquette King, Marquette King just won a championship with him. Yeah, um, yeah, man, uh, and then uh, because I told you wasted that Stu Rod called Stu up and was like, man, come down here, man, and talk to these boys. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's a head coach down here, man. So yeah, so, but you know, people don't realize that you started football late. Like you, yeah. you weren't playing your entire life. You played basketball. Uh, right? Yeah, I was a hooper. Yeah. So, so uh, when, when did football happen for you, and when did you really start taking it serious and really, like, really dialing in? So I played running running back seventh grade. That was my first year ever playing football. Eighth grade, I played quarterback. And then my freshman year, I quit because I went to Maslin, and it was a big football school, and I was a quarterback, and they already had, like, a hometown kid that was a quarterback, I guess. So the coach was like, what do you feel about wide receiver? And I was like, nope. Next day, I didn't even go. I wasn't going. I was like, and I was supposed to be going. I was staying at home, like hiding in the basement because we had a door. I go to the basement. <laughs> I locked the door in the basement. I would walk out because I could walk to practice. Uh, I would walk out the front door, act like I was leaving, and go back underneath the in the basement door, and I wouldn't go to practice. And they found out. But I was like, I don't want to play. So I ran track, played basketball my freshman year, sophomore year. I was about to go out for football again. Oh, I did. I ended up being number ninety-seven. Never seen the field. Played on JV. Didn't even see the field on JV. And I was a receiver. But I used to cook dudes on offense. Like, I'm saying, like, I used to cook everybody on varsity. Yeah. I was a receiver, but they just wouldn't give me a shot. So after that, I was just like, bro, I'm definitely not about to play football now. Yeah. And then, like I said, Devin uh, Smith, he was a receiver uh, at my high school. And he ended up going to Ohio State. He was getting recruited at the time when I was about to quit. Cause he was two years older than me. He was like, "Bro, like, just play football. Like, uh, this ain't a basketball school." He like, "You see what I got for football? Like, he got all these offers. End up going to Ohio State, and I'm playing like the four and the five on the court. That ain't even my position because yeah. I'm shitty at basketball, and I'm one of the taller kids. So I'm just like, man, I might as well just play football and see what I can get out of it. And I end up playing corner for the first time my junior year. They had an opening corner spot because the two corners from the last season left." I end up just doing good, and I start getting offers from Big Ten schools, and just like that, uh, yeah, one year. Yeah, yeah, I know you make it sound so easy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, yeah, you know, I start playing, yeah. and then you know, yeah, you know. Know. Me, Ohio State, yeah, Oregon. Crazy. You know. yeah. <laughs> I mean, shit, I don't even know, like, because like my school is like a real big, like, football tradition rich school. Like Paul yeah. Brown, he started there, and then he was from there. Then he had the Browns and the Bengals and all that shit. So our, our stadium, named after, yeah, our stadium named after him and shit. So 
it's just like we recruit we get a lot of recruits there and like i said Devin was already getting recruited past players but i mean of course i was good but like i feel like i didn't know no technique or none of that shit i was just going off athleticism so i feel like partially i'm not gonna take credit for myself i was good but like partially my school being big was the way people started seeing me and i feel like i tell my players now like coaches they go off potential so if they see a real athletic player they gonna recruit you even if you ain't really that good because the coach that recruits you in college is the coach that it says i coached him and made him this player and did that so when and they, they want to anyone to keep you away from opposing school yeah exactly that too yeah so it's just yeah. like they do that so I but what, whatever there. schools hit you though outside of ohio state we know you you ended up being yeah. a dog there and being a star at ohio state but what other schools yeah. actually my uh, first offer up? was uh northwestern and I actually wanted to go there because I wanted to go to business school and they had a real good uh, business school. Um, then I got an offer from the team up north, uh, uh, Michigan. Uh, I committed to them verbally and then because that was my junior year. So when I got that offer from them, they called me in class. I called me and I'm like, damn, like and I'm thinking like I never been recruited. So I'm like, I think I'm supposed to commit. Like, I thought that's what you did. Yeah. yeah. So I committed quick. <laughs> they thinking like I'm just locked in, so I start hearing about oh you get five free visits, and then I'm like shit I want to go visit other schools and see what's up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I get to telling people I'm gonna visit this school, visit that school, and Greg Madison was the recruiter at the time. He come to my school, he like uh you can't visit other schools like da da da. They telling me they gonna pull my scholarship if I visit any other schools. Yeah. I'm like all right, I decommit. To his face, told him, like, yo, I'm decommitting. Like, I'm going to visit other schools. Yeah. So then I got, like, a couple offers I didn't even know about because my coach didn't tell me. He was on some shady shit. I think I got an offer from West Virginia and another school. But then I ended up getting recruited by Mike Vrabel and Luke Fickle and Urban uh, at Ohio State. And I started loving that, went down there, and, and I just committed there. That's I mean, did, so, so, like, you know, you being – from that region, man. I mean, did you grow up and have any dreams of playing there, or you never even thought about it? Because I know you weren't a big football guy. Ohio you know State. I mean? hmm? You talking about Ohio State? Yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't. <laughs> like I said, I committed to Michigan. Like I was just, I was literally trying to go to school for free. I was trying to get a free education, and I was going to play football. I had no aspirations of going to the league. Like I literally was just trying to play football to get an education and see where football would take me. Uh, cause I didn't want my mom to pay for college. And then yeah. my senior year, I started liking it more cause I play offense and defense. Like I was playing both. I ended up being like all Ohio receiver and I got recruited for both too. So I was just like, man, I can really possibly like do something with football too. But still in my mind, I'm just like, I just really want to get this education. So then I go to Ohio state and then, uh, my freshman year, I registered Like I wanted to quit for during yeah. fall camp. Like, I'm gonna call my mom like, yo, I, I'm cool. I don't want to do this shit. <laughs> I don't want to do football. Like, I, I, this shit hard. I remember having a meeting with Coach Combs, Kerry Combs, like the next day, like, and he telling me like, no, you don't want to quit. Like, I know we hard on you. This is just what you need. To, this is what you need. Da, 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 whatever. Yeah. And I ended up sticking it out. And then uh, my sophomore year is when I really started to like love it and like love the grind and. And when I seen Roby go to the league too, because he would like mentor me, like I said, he would teach me yeah. shit. And I seen how way he practiced, so I'm like, bro, I can do this. Like, yeah, my sophomore year, which was crazy, is was a bad year for me, low key. Uh, but that year, I really like took a different step and took a mindset to like, I really love football and I want to pursue yeah. going to the league for it. So you you really you really haven't played, I believe, since the pandemic. Yeah, like you know, dealing with your injury. Funny was my now. last game. Uh, there, when we there, played the Chiefs. We, there uh, you have it. And, 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 right, <laughs> and right now, you know, you're, you're going through your rehab right now. You know, you're on, you're on your comeback tour right now. How is the rehab going right now? Um, we're not yeah. going to talk about too much. I know there's teams reaching out and stuff like that. And thank God, God is good. You yeah. know, hopefully, man, you catch on very, very soon. How, how is the rehab going, brother? Because yesterday, you know, you, don't mind you, you're only playing with a nine-year-old, but you were cutting and you, you and I'm like, okay, I'm like, like, like how do you out here in these streets? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how is the rehab going, man? And how is everything moving with that? Yeah, no, it's good, bro. Uh, um, I just been, uh, excuse me, taking a more holistic uh, approach because I done had about five or six surgeries. 
and I end up having nerve damage, and I still 100% don't know what my exact cause, excuse me, I keep burping, of my injury was, um, but basically had nerve damage and probably some other shit going on, but I've been rehabbing for probably, what, the first week of February, so a couple months since February, and I wasn't able to run in damn near three years, two and a half years without pain. Like I'm Yeah. talking about, I couldn't even jog. Like I played with my kids on the Fisher price hoop and five minutes in, I got to stop. Like my son, you know, kids, they want to keep going. I like, Oh, son, yeah. I can't, I can't even play. Like I can't even play with my kid. Cause my leg is hurting so bad. Like I can't run up the steps. I can't like do shit. So, uh, I got to the point where I was at Exos and I was just doing more, uh, acupuncture, needling, cupping, Um, more focusing on little tendons and like ligaments and smaller shit like hips, groins, ankles, more shit than just the basic like focus on the bigger picture type thing and just dialing into the detail shit. And they've been helping me a lot, bro. And I've been running for probably five or six weeks now. And uh, I just start cutting and doing all that shit like three weeks ago, like DB drill type stuff. And then today, like I said, uh, This was the first actual like workout I did. I did the whole workout that I planned for my high school players. Uh with I did the whole workout with them and I didn't really have any pain, but I had some pain after. But I've been doing way better. And uh I'm just I'm honestly glad that I can even run and do the shit I did today in the past six weeks, but shit since February, because I wasn't able to do it two, three years ago. And I just want to be able to play with my kids and shit. Family's everything, I'm bro. saying That, that like, that's way more important than football than any. yeah. You'd be able to move a few years ago, man. Like you know, I, I couldn't walk for a while. I had Yeah. three, three herniated disc, a bulging disc, so bad Yeah. that my wife would have to dress me. Like I couldn't even get dressed. Yeah, So damn. like, it, and That's crazy. it's still really bad. But like to be able to go out there and throw the ball around my kid, like we were yesterday, Yeah. Hell and yeah, bro. you know what I mean, and playing ball like that means everything, man. But Yeah. I, I still believe your story's not done yet, though, bro. Hell Because no. Yeah. you know what I mean, like I'm we've, we've I'm coming back for sure. yeah, we've seen glimpses, man. Like, and, and we know, you know, what you can do with. I want to ask you this though, because you know, years later, and I, I know, like I said, I know you don't really stay in tune with too much. We drafted another DB at Ohio Yeah. State, D Damon Arnett. Are Good. you I'm my little brother, bro. okay? So you know Dame, right? So, Yeah. Don't even like. fuck with me no more. <laughs> Oh, man. So, you know, Marshawn Lattimore, all these DBs, you know, I mean, Malik Hooker, like we, look, Ohio State is known for having DBs. Shit, going back to Sean Springs. Yeah. Yeah. Springs. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. 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 Them, yep. But the stigma around the nation, right, is the bust label, right? Like, it's, Yeah. it's always the bust label. Gary Yeah. on was a bust. Uh, Damon, I'm going to be honest with you, Damon didn't really even see the field too much. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, but I understand the stigma around us, just our franchise, because, Yeah. you know, let's just be real. Grew in them didn't really put you in the best situation, bro. You know what Hell I mean? And, no. and, and, you know, and then the injuries and stuff like that. But I feel like they just kind of gave up on you way too quick. Yeah. Damon Arnett, do you think that there's any way with everything that's, that's going on in the offs? You know, and mind you, I'm a Raider fan first. So I'm like, fuck, Arnett. Like, what the fuck, bro? Like, Yeah, in nah, any way, bro. man, like, what, what are you telling them behind the scenes or, or any of the OGs telling them, like, Yeah. Is there any chance you could see him coming back and, and, and making a difference in the league? Honestly, I pray, like I literally pray every day for, I pray for everybody honestly in the world every day. But him, like that's my brother. I always play for my brothers every day, and Yeah. I honestly, I don't, I don't even know, cause Yeah. I feel like bro is just gone right now, like. He like I said, he don't fuck with me. And I don't even necessarily think like he beef with me or don't like like me type He just shit. on his own Like shit. yeah, he like don't respond to my messages or like and I've been trying to tell him, like trying to help him, tell him if he want to talk, anything like, but I also told him like about himself too. So I feel like that's probably why he ain't really fuck with me. But I feel like he whoever he's been around has just been yes man and just been Yeah. letting him do and do all that dumb shit. So it's just like At the end of the day, I can only try to help so much. You know what I'm saying? And I'm still, if he ever see this or anybody ever see this, can, can tell him, like, I'm still here if he want to talk. And I'm always going to be here. But, bro, just, he gone, bro. Like, for real. Hey, bro, it's it's crazy to me, man, where you where you have, and, and, I, and I think, you know, coming from, you know, guys who 
are regular guys, right? When yeah. You have that a level of ability, right? And you have the opportunity to make millions of dollars, right? People yeah. like us, we sit back and we're like, what the fuck? Yo, you can make millions of dollars. You can make generational wealth playing a game, right? Right, bro. And I know when you're born with that kind of talent, you don't view it from that same prism, yeah. right? And and I, I think with, with him, right, singularly, and a lot of the guys, you talk about the John ja Morans of the world. Yeah. You know, man, in, in, in today's world, man, there's like this, this – it's almost like a trance that these guys get under where they want to be gangsters Man. and they want to be athletes. They want to be the athlete. Like, it don't and, work and, that way. <laughs> it don't. It's, yo, gangsters, gangsters don't play football, bro. And they don't point guns at cameras on the internet. And they on not social on media. social media. <laughs> they, not, they don't they want to be on social media, bro. I look, I've been around enough gangsters in my life, bro. Yeah. A lot of them in my family. They yeah. don't even have social media pages, bro. And I'm going right. to be honest with you, bro. In the National Football League today, right, yeah. Do, do you think that? Do you think that there's anything that could be done? Because I know there's a lot of mentorship, but I mm -hmm. think what winds up happening when you come into the league, you're talking to guys who could be your dad, so mm -hmm. you don't feel like you're on the same level with them. Do yeah. you feel like there's like kind of a um, a support system that they can have for some of these young brothers that are coming in with guys that are a little closer to their age? And I know that some guys have it, but every yeah. team doesn't have that. Yeah, I mean. Bro, honestly, it's it's I don't even know. It's like it's it's shit low key that's kind of already set up like that, like the NFL PA. And I yeah. was just telling I forget who I was talking to about this shit, but like it's like once you get to that that league status, like some niggas you just can't tell. You can't tell them shit. Yeah. Like yeah. they feel like when they got money, they they're they're bigger than you, or they don't gotta listen to you. Or they don't got to listen to anybody. Or they get to the point where it's like, I'm in the league. I can't trust you. So I'm going to do my own thing and yeah. passing up blessings or whatever. But it's just like I told, damn, I forget who I was talking to. Whoever I was talking to, I was telling them, like, even myself, like, when I got to the league, it's like the little shit, like the NFL PA events that they have for, like, people to understand, like, how to budget your money and just little shit like that like you know the people yeah. that don't even want to fucking listen to it, i wouldn't listen to it and i regret it as like i should have went to them events like they'll have an event in miami like where you go yeah. kick it and chill with other players or older players retired players or people from different companies and i remember denzel ward i remember him going to one him telling me like yeah it was cool bro like you should go this this and that and i was just like nah like i don't i ain't trying to go to that shit i'm trying to just go kick it you know what i'm saying so it's just like shit is low key already set up like that, and then like I said, you got older vets like Reggie Nelson and people like that that try to get you to be understanding of that and try to show you the way, but you just got guys that just don't care to listen or don't yeah. even want to do that shit. So even if it was there, I feel like if it was a specific group, I feel like it wouldn't even be people even trying to go to it or hear people trying to say anything. Hey, how really many egos, man? So well, 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 as as of right now, right? You know, we know your football story's not done. We we've talked oh, about that, bro. We know you. You know, you're only 27 years old, bro. You know, elite speed, yeah. size, always been able to jump like like a motherfucker. I know you're gonna. Be you always had them bunnies, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so like, look, you know, we fans of the team. We fans of, of the game. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But we we are we 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 are guys who have seen this game for a long time, right? So I know. Right. The package of, of athletic ability that you have belongs in the National Football League. But yeah. but when you get to my age, yeah. right, you get in your 40s and stuff and you, and it's done and you know it's done. Right. Yeah. I see what you're doing with these young fellas, man. Oh, that that is different. I, I, I mean, is that your passion going forward the yeah. rest of your life? Because it looks like you want football to be a part of your story for the rest of your life, man, for what yeah. you're doing. I hear you doing. Yeah, Bro, for sure. hey, real quick, real quick, Con, before, before you answer he heard yeah. your voice. Elijah yeah. heard your voice. He said, is that Mr. Conley? I said, yeah. He said, can I say hi? Like, like yeah. and you just met him yesterday. So like right. what Wasted just said, literally like that impact already. Yeah. Uh, you, it's different. But go ahead, brother. I'm, I'm sorry. I had to yeah. put that out. No, no, no. Bro. I appreciate it. Again, I appreciate you even bringing him out and trusting me to even work with him. But, but like, I, don't, I ain't even trying to be bragging or be talking about myself, but I'm just built different, bro. Like, Talk some, that shit. Something about me, bro. I just I'm built different, bro. Like I love positivity. I love seeing people win. Like it's, it's just too much negativity in the world. Yes. And I come from a family 
of my dad got shit. I honestly don't know how many exactly, but I know he got at least 14 kids. Yeah. Damn near like 13 baby moms. So we all got different moms, but yeah. I got hella young brothers and sisters. And I felt like I took on that role as their dad. So I always just been that people person and yeah. always trying to make everything right and trying to make everything good for everybody else. And I learned to obviously be selfish and take time for myself and build myself because I got to be the best me to make the best brother, son, husband, whatever. Yeah. But I always just love helping people and seeing people win. So I love seeing these young guys grow. I love being around them. I love, like you said, being around the game. It helps me. Shit, I tell them like shit, watching y'all and telling y'all and critiquing y'all and this shit, it helps me still understand that I need to be on this shit. So when I do get back, I yeah. already know how to do the shit. So just it's always a blessing that comes from you helping other people. Like and not right. just going to feed the homeless so no. you can get good karma. Like, no, just help yeah. somebody like shit. I, I post shit positively on social media. And people can say it's corny, whatever, whatever. But I know at least one person gonna read it, and it's gonna. Bro, I live by oh, that. I feel that shit. Like you know, I live saying? by that, bro. Yeah. I, I live, and and I think that's what draw, like like randomly, just like the other day, I just seen, I just seen Kyle post something talking about. I, I was doing a workout out here, and I just said, "Hey, man, if you're ever in the area, boom, the next yeah. day, yeah. We're, we're rocking, and now we're doing the show." Yeah, it, bro. It, you know what I mean, like that's how positivity works, man. Like it gravitates yeah. to it, and. and I think at some point, bro, like like I said before, your 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 career is not over, but I think yeah. at some point, yeah. Have you ever thought about podcasting? Because yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm man, about to do one. I'm about like, to do one. The I am the I am athlete now, the pivots, you know, what yeah. we got going on, man. I yeah. definitely think that you have have that yeah. that you know what I mean. Like you have that, bro. Yeah, yeah. So really what I want to do is I want to keep doing the training. Uh my cousin, my cousin that just moved out here. He actually took me through the workout today with my players. Um, he's the one who really got me to want to start actually training. Yeah. Uh, me and him want to actually do like where we go around and do like basically like a one day camp, but have like a two day like weekend type shit. So one day would be the camp and then one day would be like the seminar where we go and we just talk or like give game or just shit like that. But yeah. also I was telling people, I don't know if you'll see me tweet. I want to do a documentary um yep. of my my life basically like my journey before football like my life what i went through as a kid because i went through a lot of shit as a kid um that built me mentally my football career my rape case just my whole journey my injuries this whole yeah. thing and then make a book and then even go around and if anybody wants me to speak at schools Jails, fucking. No, don't anything. don't say that, bro. Like, Trust me. I I think yeah, people definitely do, yeah, and, I, and I, I, I would like to get in contact with you because yeah, in, in in my city, people need to hear what you have to say, bro. Because yeah. right, I I don't mean it, but yo, there was one one thing before I, you know, I'm having the you know the, the blessing and pleasure to meet you, bro. That I've always that resonated with me was how you handled the situation you went through at such yeah. a young age. A lot of people would have allowed that to destroy them. Yeah. A lot of people would have went off the rails. They wouldn't have been able to handle it. And you were yeah. able to come right into the National Football League and just you handled you did everything properly, bro. And and the yeah. one thing that resonated with me was when they awarded you that low level of damages, how yeah. you viewed it. You just wanted your name to be clear. That's, that's it. it. No because, money, bro, no nothing. <laughs> because I, and I read that somewhere and I was like, that's what that's what the fuck I'm talking about. Because people don't understand something, man. My dad used to say this to me all the time, man. When you know you playing, when I was playing, you know, play high school, this that, mm -hmm. pop one or whatever. He said, make sure you represent the name on the back of your jersey, man. Exactly. Fuck the name That's on the true. front, bro. And, right. and 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 without all of this shit, bro, you're still Gary on Connolly. Yeah. I mean, no matter where you go in life, and you don't want some bullshit that you didn't do defining who you are, bro. I love right. the way that you went and 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 changed your story, and you're continuing to change your story. My yeah. my big saying that I always say, and Graf knows this, energy cannot be created nor destroyed it only transmute yeah. and you put positivity out into the atmosphere it transmutes and it comes back at you to a different person one of the players you're around something yeah. you do one of your quotes or something resonating saving somebody's life i feel like you got something to say man and i, and I feel like even when you get in the league or whether you don't whatever higher calling to say. higher calling yeah, you, you got something to say, bro. You got to stay. You got to stay out here in the public eye, bro. Because you Kyle, definitely we, got something to say. We live by impact over everything. 
Yeah, thank you, period. man. I appreciate you. Period. And, and if you ever need, and, and mind you, we you know we we run a simple podcast. We we you know we we do some things in the nation. If you ever need some help with anything, bro, whether it's the documentary, spreading the word, you know, with, with the camps, yeah. any of that, bro. We got a lot of guys all across, the, you know, the, the the states, man, that can definitely help with anything that you got going on, brother. We yeah, really man. truly appreciate you. And and this is the thing, man, because. I want a lot of people to understand, you know, I, I told you yesterday, we have, we have a guy named Stuart Schweigert that comes on the show, a former third round pick from the Raiders. Yeah. And I love having guys that, you know, were, were, were high round picks or even later round picks yeah. that may, that it may not have worked out whether, what, whatever reason or not. Right. To yeah. hear the story, to get, give a better understanding because the one thing that kills me about this fan base is right. We live yeah. by this mantra. Once a Raider, always a Raider. Yeah. But if you feel that they didn't live up to the hype or blah, 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 a certain individuals yeah. kind of take that out. Yeah. No, we can't do that. <laughs> right. You, know I mean? you got to like, keep it real the whole way. You have to keep that real. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you were a guy that still played in the league. Like it wasn't like you just came in year one and you were just gone. Like yeah. and, and you're still young and still on your way up and still trying to get back in the league. And I, I, I honestly, bro, yesterday I, I, man, I told my wife, I was like, I'm making a major prayer because I hope, that, that works out for you and your family, man. Because you too, yeah. man. truly, bro, you're a, you're a you. stand up individual, brother. Like I couldn't even when we met yesterday. Like I said, my son was talking about that shit all day, and he's yeah. met some people. You know what I mean? And 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 yeah. I'm you know we're around the team a lot. We're always you know I, I travel uh, every home game to Vegas. I'm around Jake. I've been around Jacobs. I've been around all these guys yeah. on this roster. Yesterday was one of the dopest moments of being around a Raider to me because it was real. Yeah. It was real. Right. You know what I mean? And, and, and it was organic. It was just, us. It was just yeah. us. There was no cameras around. We were just kicking it. Right. And and that that's just, bro, you can't teach that. You can't teach the humility. You can't teach the honesty. You can't teach that realism. Yeah. And bro, keep being who you are, bro. And and, and we're gonna look, we're gonna put into the universe that you're gonna get back into the league. Yeah. God forbid it doesn't happen, right? I'm telling you yeah. now, bro, your calling is, is way past football, bro. Yeah. And you always got a home over here, brother. And, oh, and, 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 and I'm going to be real with you, bro. People got to understand something. And that's why I love having these kind of conversations with guys who who, who played and that actually made it. Because, yeah. you know, people who watch the game, they think mm -hmm. they know. Right. But mm -hmm. they don't know, bro. It's there's 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 very little that separates guys who are pro bowlers from mm -hmm. guys who don't quite have the right situation happen for him because it's people placing things it's about getting drafted to the right situation for now sure. had no no now had things worked out and you you know went a little higher or went a little lower it might have been a better situation for you and right now we might not be sitting here talking to you right. you know what i mean and i i want people to realize something too and not to bad mouth the, the former regime right but yeah. we do this thing every day and we're always commenting and talking about the team and mm -hmm. i know from looking at the game and the way the players were and the way things happened, that yeah. what happened previous to this was yeah. not the National Football League. That shit was not normal, and it was yeah, a goddamn man. dumpster fire. And and people yeah, wonder yeah. why the team is trying to crawl out of the hole that we're in now. It's because of shit like that. You For have sure. good players. You can't look on the roster and see, okay, this guy runs a, a sub 4-4 four, four and he's 6-1. Yeah. And, and I'm gonna go and go draft some five foot nothing corner because I drafted him and yeah. cut that guy or trade this guy. Like to right. me, that kind of logic. I don't care that if I'm a fan or not. I can see <laughs> that that ain't right. Yeah, yeah, for sure, definitely. I mean, you've hey, seen that team that we had, bro. Eighteen. Yeah. Like that was a good ass team, bro. Like we had Mari Cooper, we had DC, we had Khalil Mack. I think Bruce was still on the team at the time. Yeah. Uh, me, fucking. Rashawn Bro, didn't care though, Con. That wasn't his team. Yeah. That wasn't yeah. his team. He didn't care. Yeah, he didn't care. He just wanted to get rid of him. It was an ego thing. Mack. You got yeah. rid of Khalil Mack. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> defense player of the, of the year. Come on, greatest bro. defensive players of all time, bro. Like, like you just, just randomly just like. And you then know. think about like the pieces that are there now. If you would have had like a merge of those two, like that, just, that shit would have been crazy. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I mean, bro. I, 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 I it's one more thing I, I wanted to touch on before you know. You know, I know we've been here for a while and stuff, bro. I always wondered, and pause if necessary, because I said touch on. Oh, you like, no, 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 no,
We got it ready. Hey, Con, I, I want to, you know what I'm saying? Hey, no, I, I, I know you want to pause a little bit. Every time somebody says something, pause one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always wonder, everybody talks about how great of a leader Derek Carr was. Like, yeah. how, how did you guys on the defense, like, kind of receive him and, like, when – mistakes were made or something like how do defensive players respond to that like when yeah. he throws an untimely pick or yeah. and i don't want you to throw him under the bus because i know you still no, really- i just talked about this uh in the last podcast uh because he was asking me uh how i feel about him leaving or whatever um i feel like dc was a great leader um me coming from ohio state like i said like i just feel like ohio state was just different a different program we came from shit where our offense, shit, my last year at Ohio State, our defense was way, like, carrying the offense damn near. And mm-hmm. not necessarily saying it was the players. I feel like it was low-key the coaching. But we had to know how to come back from that shit. We had to know how to score for the offense. We had to know how to take care of the offense. So once some shit like that happened, like, of course, I'd be like, damn, like, what the fuck going on? But, like, I never would, like, trip really over if, if he made, like, a bad play or something because I, I know how to – overcome that as a defense like a defender and what i came from but i feel like as far as him like he never beat himself up about it even if it was like a you know he had like a crazy play in the wrong moment or something like that he never really beat himself up about it and he always was giving his all and trying to make a make up for it you know what i'm saying or yeah keeping the offense in or keeping the defense in or whatever like he was really a good leader to me i feel like and then like y'all saying, like, it ain't even just about football. Like, the way I see him as a dad and yeah. as a man, yeah, I, I respect him. And yeah, so. we've never killed him for that. We never cooked him for none yeah, of that. Yeah. We respect him as a man, yeah. father, yeah, like, like husband, God-fearing man. We were just yeah. talking. We, we, we've just – our complaints have always been what's on the field. You yeah, know yeah, yeah. I mean? I mean, I mean, shit, even with me, like, I did some shit that was just – you like, what the fuck? I say that to my damn self. Like, I don't – But it's football. I, I mean, everybody yeah, does Like, that. everybody does that. Like, you're going to have people that say, what the fuck is you doing? Shit, your coach should cuss you out too. Like, yeah. it's just – it's always going to be something that happens, and I don't ever take – I mean, unless you're just disrespectful, I don't take nothing personal. Like, he know that. He know he done did some plays that was just dumb as hell. I done did some plays that was dumb as hell. Yeah. It's all about how you respond to shit. I, I gotta ask you this real quick. I got two more questions. And I'll, look, I want my yeah. guy to go kick it with the family, man. He's back nah, home. I ain't tripping. I got time, bro. <laughs> That's my man, my guy, man. I, I gotta ask you, man. Where were you mm. when Antonio Brown pulled up on that goddamn air balloon, bro? Like, <laughs> he pulled up on the air balloon. Were you still? Where were, you, at? were you at camp in Napa when when yeah, Antonio Brown pulled I, up? Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't there though. I don't think I was there. Okay, but, like, like, bro, what was your thoughts but, in that minimal time dude. when this dude came and fro- froze his feet up? And, and the, 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 the hey, shit? dude made me think, like, the league was just something else, the way he viewed the league. Cause, like NBA like, Jam or some shit. Like, <laughs> when, like he, I thought it was a movie, the way he used to say shit. Because, like, and I think it, he used to actually do some of the shit at the Steelers. They must have just let him get away with it. Because I remember, one, he, uh, he always had his little personal trainer with him, like, I'm talking yeah. about like Gruden to be like, "Hey, AB, you going?" And his trainer be like, "Nope, like he ain't going. He did, he did, he did two reps already. Like, nah, he ain't, don't go." I'm just like, "You could do that. Like, can I go get somebody like that to do that? <laughs> I don't want to go. I gotta go against these niggas every fucking play. Like, so uh, so he had shit like that. When we do our warm up, he go do his own warm up with his his trainer. Uh, yeah, we had the lift. Like, we have a team lift. Like on the iPad." He do his own lift with his trainer. Like I'm talking about that dude was always with him. Uh wow. Um shit, when we ate the meals at Napa, he he got his own shit. Like I don't know where he got it from, but he got his own shit. He stayed in his own Airbnb. <laughs> like he didn't stay at the hotel. They was telling him, like, yo, it's curfew check. You better be here. He ain't coming. Uh, For those who don't know, there's a hotel right there in Napa, right next yeah. to the high school, where oh, everybody yeah. stayed. stayed at. Yeah, everybody. everybody had to stay there. Yeah. I'm talking about even the coaches was in there staying. Yeah, yeah. He had his own Airbnb. Like, That's nah. fucking and, crazy. But he's still coming to practice like everything normal. Uh, the what fucking the uh, fuck? when we go to the so it was preseason because he didn't play in the games, but preseason, you know, we uh when we fly to an away game, he said he used to take like a PJ. 
and he used to drive you know we ride the bus to the the plane he used to yeah. drive his own car to the plane he's like y'all don't drive your own cars like y'all gotta ride the bus y'all gotta take y'all y'all gotta take the team plane like he just was saying all this shit i'm just like bro like you must have been really living over there like he was just doing some <laughs> wild shit but then like his little bipolar moments was funny as hell too like i mean it's kind of sad but it's just like at the same time like because i mean he's still doing what he feel like he needs to do still so doing the just, same shit i feel like it's funny at yeah the, for what at I this see, point, it's like he trolling like, yeah, yeah he was like what i tell you uh i don't know if it ever came out in the media when he him and may got into it on when field. he called him a cracker yeah <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. you were there yeah, this is that practice. This is oh, at, I gotta hear this, bro. This is at Alameda. We was actually um practicing in uh Alameda at the uh, Raiders facility. Yeah, I remember we was on field too, and I don't know. I think it was already well. Obviously, it was already tension build up. That was after the Gruden called me and apologized yeah. and all that shit. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some had happened in practice, and I remember it was an offensive play. Where he ran the wrong route, or he did something wrong, and it was like getting on him, and he was just walking back. And I remember him walking back, and you know how when somebody like walking about to walk up on you, like aggressive, he yeah. was just walking. And I'm like, damn, who he about to walk up on? He walk up on Mayock, and they get to arguing. He like, I'll put you in your face, cracker. Like, don't ever talk to me crazy. Da, 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 da. I'm like, what, bro? Uh, I don't know. Somebody on defense, because it was on our defensive sideline. I remember somebody on defense, like, just grabbing me, like, bro, chill, chill, chill. I'm over there, like, oh, this nigga tripping. <laughs> like, this nigga is crazy. May I go over there, red as shit. I'm like, oh, this nigga is tripping, bro. But yeah, but then, so like, shit like that will happen, but then, like, Shit, even within the next couple hours or the next day, like he just come back like nothing happened. I'm just like, bro, like you literally, you just spazzed yesterday. Like <laughs> we low key ended practice because of that shit, and then you just come back tomorrow like you didn't do that shit. But like it would be times like where he had talked, he had talked to me and like he'd be like having a conversation. And he'd like go off like just talking about like they they don't fuck with us. Like you better watch yourself. Da, da, da. And then just start like talking in third person like and then be calm like. But that's that's how it is. Like that's how yeah. they treat A B. That's how that's what they do to A B. And I'm just looking at it, bro, like, bro, what is wrong with you, bro? Like, you talking to third person one, like that's just off the wall. Like you, you having a conversation with you, you talking to third person, you weird. But then the way he just changed topics and moods, yeah. I was like, bro, bro, some different shit. Bro, you think that you think that perfect hit really cooked him? Like, do you really think I that don't shit know? Worked? I I think possibly some possibly, but I think bro just I don't know. I yeah, think he's just wired different. <laughs> yeah, he got to be, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, this yeah. dude is from Florida, bro. Yeah. He and he didn't go to different. Miami as talented as he is. He, yeah. He, like, he went to Central Michigan. He was at FIU. I got to the high school. He's been like that, got bro. To him. Yeah, money definitely got to him, too. He just, he feel like he could do that. Like I said, I when you get to the league, you feel like, no, you get that money. Some people yeah. feel like nobody could touch you. I know some people in that area, too, in Central Michigan. They said he was the same way back then. Yeah. Like, like that was a reason why he went to Central Michigan because he had he had to go to a so called smaller school because of how he would yeah. respond and react yeah. to react. He was at that FIU first. He was. Yeah. Oh, he was. Oh, I know that. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. and then he got kicked out and he had to go to Central. He so he's out. always been an issue. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. See, yeah, that makes sense then, bro. I'm hey, just saying, bro, real different. quick, man. Like, <laughs> I, were you there when he made this bullshit up? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I would have told his ass that shit weak. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey God, hey, hey real quick, weak. man. Toughest, toughest assignments in the NFL, man. The, the toughest guys that you went up against, and I know you probably got this question a million times, but like yeah. the toughest guy, name three guys where you were so like shit. This is different. Shit, honestly, I'm gonna go with him. Like, and not, of course, I'm never gonna downplay myself, but like. Big Ben didn't play that whole game when we yeah. played him. So he yeah. had uh Dobbs out there, which he still was doing decent. But yeah. dude, when I tell you he the quickest nigga off the ball, release wise, yeah, and like to try to get your hands on, like I, I probably got my hands on that man like three times out of what thirty five snaps I played against. Like, dude, That's dude. Crazy. I'm talking about if he went on his shit, like dude would literally be I mean he is a Hall of Fame receiver. Oh, like, definitely. He he yeah. I'm talking about bro. One of the ghosts. Crazy, bro. Like, and I'm talking about like 
when I say like you can't touch this man, you can't really touch. If you touch that man, it, even if he caught the ball, you feel like you won type shit. Like yes. that's that's how elusive he was, bro. Wow. Uh, but him for sure, and then even going against him in practice. Um, uh, what I feel like, and this is just me personally, Amari Cooper is one of the best Route overall route. receivers I've ever played against, and I feel like. His downfall is letting people get to his head or I don't even know if it's necessarily that, but just like just being consistent of what he is, because he is that like going against him at practice, like that dude can stop full speed on a dime. Like niggas will tear their ACL if they try to do that shit. Like <laughs> route, route yeah. was crazy. And yeah. what's crazy, he's strong as fuck for real. People don't even realize how strong he really is. Dude be in a weight room putting up numbers fast as a motherfucker. But I feel like he he was definitely one of the harder ones. I mean, but it was just practice. But in the game, Antonio Brown, um, who else did I go against? You Keenan seen Tay? Allen? Who? Oh, have you seen Tay? Devontae? Okay, Adams? No, nah, but he he definitely the truth for okay. sure. Okay. I ain't never played against him. Uh, Keenan Allen, he not that fast, but, bro, routes is crazy. One of the best yeah. releases I've oh, ever yeah. went against. Uh, mm -hmm. Him, I'm trying to think who else I played it. So I was like, really. Oh, um, I didn't go against him a lot, a lot. But Diggs, Diggs was crazy. Okay. You played it. You you had a you had a practice. We'll you it, you went against Hop a few times. Or it was Hop. Yeah, yeah. Hop. No, no, I played against Hop. Hop, man, Hop is good. He's smart as fuck. Uh, but I feel like he's just a great ass catcher. Like, yeah, he yeah. can strap the fuck out of Hop, but he gonna catch the ball. That's the difference with him. So it's okay. just like I don't feel like he just getting away from me. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm when I go off of people that's for me, I'm thinking about who was hard to guard. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like niggas who just getting away. Like I'm trying to get my hands on it. It's a hard yeah. time for me staying with this dude because he elusive and he can get off. Like Hop, he I feel like he not easy, but I feel like he was low key easy to guard. But, but he's what, still gonna catch the ball though. Like what was there one play in the NFL where you were like Yo, I don't know if I'm ready for this shit. I was just about to ask, bro. I was just up. Yo, you took the words right out of my mouth. Bro. I was just uh, about to be like, but this one play where you like, where you got mixed and you like, yo, yo, bro, okay. this shit is different. Uh, the Jets, my first year, uh, we played Robbie. Robbie Anderson was on that team at the time. The Man, when I tell you, one. this nigga took off. He almost ran my hamstrings off my fucking legs, bro. He hit a little quick. Uh, double release. I didn't get my hands on. I just opened the gate. And mind you, I'm thinking I'm fast. Yeah. So you just open the gate. You basically let the dude run straight. When I tell you this man was running, I was so glad that they didn't see him open. I was running for my life and my fucking hamstrings felt like they was about to fall off. I'm like, oh, bro, I don't even know if I can handle the speed in this league, bro. This shit is crazy, bro. <laughs> And I'm talking about he hit me with the quickest shit ever, bro. And that was my first game coming off injury. So I'm like, bro, I don't know. But then What's crazy is after that, that's when I made the play with uh I think it was Curse or Kierce or whatever. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. But then that's when I got back to myself. But I ain't gonna lie, he had me low key thinking about it, like, hey, I don't know if I'm ready for this shit. <laughs> Welcome to the NFL, young fella. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about he toasted me, like he made me think I was slow as shit. Hey, but, if I ask you this real quick, man, right? And, and yeah. I know it's been it's been it's been forever. Yeah. What does Oakland Coliseum mean to you? Yeah. Oh, uh, bro. <laughs> the Coliseum itself, the field, I don't fuck with that. Piece but. of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, nah, the, the, the Raiders organization, bro, like, so I've been blessed to play in a, in a great three programs. So my high school, tradition-rich program. Ohio State, tradition-rich program. Oakland Raiders, tradition-rich program. So it's just, I treat it as the same. Uh, of course, it's a bigger stage with it being in the NFL and the legends and all that. But I treat it similar to the same as Ohio State in my high school. Like the tradition and just like I said, once a Raider, always a Raider is a real thing. Because like the real Raider fans, like they still always show love like y'all. You know what I'm saying? Everybody yeah. else. You see the, the people in your comments and shit like yeah. the one dude. I don't know if you see. He was like, I know them in the family, like me and him. 
yeah, yeah. Keep it rocking. Like I still wear his yeah. wristband. Uh, it had broke. That's my dog Pinoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. wearing. I had him send me another wristband because I literally wore his wristband. Life goes on like every day. Like I never took it off, but it broke. Yeah. But like the shit like that, like not even more so. Of course, the legends and all that, like them being at practice, Willie Brown, Lester Hayes, being around, showing you like was really about Raider Nation. Um, the games was always fucking lit. Like, yeah, the, the shit with Beast Mode was like dancing. Oh they didn't rock it. Like, you didn't yeah. see that nowhere else, bro. Like, that shit lit, bro. But like, <sighs> just even more so, just the fans, like craziest fans, diehard fans, like love that shit. Like I said, I always appreciate the Raider, or, Raiders organization, and I still do. Had no problem with the Raiders organization or the people that drafted me. It was just that staff at the time, but. I still yeah. fuck with Raider Nation for real. Hey, hey, we gotta give. Go, go ahead, my son. So real quick, man, this is the tough one, man, and I don't know if you want to answer it or not, but I, I gotta throw it out there. Yeah, Mark Davis, do yeah. you have faith that he can turn this thing around? Because I, I'm a guy who, to be honest with you, bro, I love Mark. Yeah. Because look, man, his father tried to get a stadium built for years. Yeah. You know, he had to do what he had to do. California wasn't gonna pay for right. another stadium. You know, this is a guy who is not a billionaire. You know, his father wasn't a billionaire. You got all of these people in the National Football League, like with the Texans. Yeah. These people are super rich. They own football right. teams like we own sneakers. Right. Like, it, it's just, it's yeah. like almost like them, they're like a hobby, and their hobby is making money. <laughs> yeah. Do, do, you, do you have faith in him as an owner to be able to turn this thing around here? You know, because I yeah. do. No, I do. I feel like he can. Um, It's just all, like, it's... It's all about like you like both of y'all said. It's about being that humility person and then being a good person, and you just going to attract like you said that energy. Like if you got that good energy, you do what you're supposed to do. That energy is gonna come. So I feel like if he's doing the right things, he do what he's supposed to do. That good energy is gonna come, and that team is gonna form, and that program is gonna turn around for sure. And I mean, shit, not saying that it's a big thing or not even putting much into it, but. Like, you got Tom Brady, he want to own part of the team. Like, that's just – it's just energy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Little, it's, it's not necessarily saying, oh, the program going to turn around because Brady the owner, but just little signs of energy. Like, Tom Brady want to own the Raiders. Like, now Mark Davis, Tom Brady may start talking, having meetings. Who, Tom, who you think I should bring in? Who you think this yeah. – because yeah. this nigga is the GOAT in football. So, like, you know what I'm saying? So, just like you said, energy – I feel like he can definitely turn it around for sure. And to, like they got pieces, bro. Like facts. They got I mean Matt, Chandler Jones, Devontae, Josh. There, there's so many. Yeah. You, you got them. So so them. now we gotta start a campaign in Raider Nation to try to get kind of get a workout or something, man. Cause we need some corners. Shit, hey, if they want me, I'm coming. <laughs> it's for sure. Hey, 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 we, hey, it's time to come home, brother. <laughs> hey, and and for some strange reason, right? When we do yeah. this stuff, you know. Yeah. We 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 kind of there's a guy out there that was that that was released from the Ravens. You know we're not gonna say no names, but we yeah. we kind of urged our team to go out there and put a uh you know put put a bid in for him, and, and they did. Yeah. And he ended up going yeah. to the Giants, and you know and blah blah blah. But yeah. um you know I think we got a little bit of power in the nation, man. <laughs> we might be able to say, you know what, man, bring our brother Khan home. Yeah, for sure, bro. It'd be, it'd be a, the perfect the perfect story, right? Like, Hell yeah, that should be lit. I ain't gonna lie. Hey, that you know we're gonna do our best to make that happen, man. Hey, Shout out to come. Yeah, uh, yes, he did play with Marshawn. Definitely yeah, did. Definitely did. That's my dog. I mean, yeah. he gave me a uh, he gave me a fucking Louis backpack and a. I still carry that damn Louis duffel. Like, <laughs> Louis duffel bag and a backpack for free. That's like, dope. You want this? I'm like, hell yeah. What you mean? The backpack was like low key rip. Like, I don't know if you wanted this rip. I'm like, hell yeah, I want that shit. Man, and that shit come from beast mode. That shit yeah, rip. I, I go sew that motherfucker up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, real quick, you mind if we get a couple comments in the, in, in yeah, the conversation? No, I, I gotta uh, before we do that, I got to say this real quick too, man. Yeah. Let's give Reggie McKenzie some flowers because yeah, dog, not only did he go get Khalil and he got DC in a Reggie. second, you know, get you know Gabe in, in what the third round, like like, yeah. like he made some moves, got Coop, yeah. but also. He was the guy that actually did his homework on your situation. Yeah, yeah. Believed in me, bro. Yeah, and believed in you and really said, this is bullshit. We're doing our homework. A guy that fell to the 20s that should have been a top 10 pick. Yeah. You know what I mean? So 
I got to give, give, give Reggie McKenzie his flowers, man. Oh, Shout out yeah, to you, bro. man, for taking a, a, a real chance on yeah. a brother that, that was innocent this whole time and deserved right. to be a first round guy, even ahead. Lost a lot of money. Yo, two Don't million dollars. He was supposed to be the eleventh pick. He's supposed to go to yeah. Tampa Bay. I, re <laughs> I remember that he was supposed to go to Tampa Bay, yeah. and, and 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 bro, he lost like two, three million dollars because of that shit. Just yeah, bro, bro, there needs to be a law, and I don't want to get into this derail. Uh, there needs to be a law. Prison. Being able to do that yeah. shit, man. They need to do time, bro. I would have. They, they need years, to hold bro. up the jail just like other people. Be a beam to the jailhouse. I would have yeah. did ten years if I was convicted, bro. Like the fuck. That shit I'm is telling crazy. people that word. The worst case is uh, the dude from Baylor, man. That nigga did mm -hmm. two years in prison, and the girl came out and talking about she lied two years later. And now where she at? Living her life, just chilling. My and his career's is done. Can't even get back in. And he was supposed to be the number one pick overall. <laughs> did two Insane. years in prison, bro. Insane, crazy. Nothing happened to that girl. Wow. Hey, do, do you are you familiar with Nate Hobbs? Con. Uh, Yes. Hey, Rob, hey, Rob, hey, Rob, hey, Rob, let, let, me, let me do this for a con. Hey, hey Hobbs is a dog. <laughs> yeah, he a corner? He's a yeah, he's a corner for us from Illinois. I think he's in his third year this year. Yeah. Um, he's, he's a dog. He's a dog. I, I'm, I'm going to send you some of his tape to check out. Okay. All right. Get, get some hey, questions in, you guys. Hey, Robert Cicinero, you look like a thick-ass bag of groceries. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Andy. He said, cop the Conley jersey when you got drafted, bro, bro. Still got that, baby. 21 black. Shout out to my yeah. guy. Appreciate Anthony that, Yellow, bro. Man. Appreciate he, that, for sure. He said, shout to a, a brave Raider. He said, I saw your highlights running a pick six back to the house. That was the Cleveland game. Yeah. Yep. Baker, what's crazy is I slipped on that play. I wasn't even supposed to get that pick. Uh, he just threw a bad throw, and I slipped, caught the ball. I ain't do nothing, just ran in the end zone. <laughs> yeah, there you. Hey, Sean Oakman, that was the yeah. one. Yeah, crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember yeah. that that went viral when he was standing up with his teammates yeah, around his him? Team behind him. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm gonna be real. I think that may be the greatest story ever. I, I want you to be a Raider because you know that's what yeah. we do. But. To go yeah. back to Cleveland, you grew up what forty five minutes an hour outside of Cleveland. Yeah, Denzel Ward yeah. over there. That yeah, would be dog. dope yeah. shit, bro. To see you go to Cleveland yeah. and play opposite yeah. of your guy, man. That would be fucking crazy, yeah. bro. That Anywhere, would be bro. Anywhere, any opportunity I get, bro. I'm grateful for for sure. Everybody in the chat saying shout out to Conley Island, man. The original, yeah. the original yeah. island Appreciate in the nation. Shout Appreciate to John. That. Great show, guys. Gary on. Keep feeling your passion, my guy. God bless. And whatever your future holds, I believe you'll make it the most. Stay up, Kings. Shout Appreciate out to our that, bro. That's yes. real shit. Definitely. That's, that's shit I like. Like, just positive energy, bro. Yeah. Like, it don't take nothing to do that. No, at all. Yeah. Shout, shout out to McDaniels. Man, favorite moment as a Raider, Con. What you got for us? Uh, hey. I mean, I had to save my pick six for sure. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was that's my first pick, too. Like, yeah, pick six. Definitely. But you had, but you had three that year, though, right? Yeah, yeah. It was just my first pick. Was yeah. Pick six. yeah, I remember. Man. I was, bro. I was running down my fucking living room like you was, like you was running. I'm like, oh shit, bro, You know how rare that is for us to see pick sixes, <laughs> bro. In, in the last couple years, years, bro. I, that's why I was like, yo, yeah. how y'all gonna get rid of con, bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honestly, other than that, bro, like literally, I just love home games, bro. Like, that shit was just lit, bro. Yeah. Like, stadium used to be smelling like gas, all type of shit. It was, it was wild. <laughs> it was a butt-ass <laughs> time on there, bro. Sure. Wait, so you got, you got a few more, man, for, for our brother hey, Con before hey, you get about it? Hey, bro, look, you know what? We're going we got, we gonna to leave some more meat on the bone, bro. I, I know this ain't going to be our last conversation, man. No, you know what I'm saying? Not. Yeah, so, not. man, listen, Whenever bro. Whenever y'all have to let me know. Oh no! Right. And, 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 and moving forward, man, I want y'all to know, man, like, kind of, this this is family, man. Like, moving forward, really, like I said this before, a great individual, man. I, I've only got I gotten a few hours to just kick it, and when you come back, uh, when you come back to Dallas, bro, because I know you're doing your rehab. I told yeah. you, cigar lounge, yeah. bro. We're going, <laughs> yeah. we're hitting that cigar lounge. We're gonna go buy back it. one day. Yeah, yeah there Friday. you go. There you go. So we're gonna kick it, man, and we we're gonna vibe out. Uh, salute to everybody in the chat, man. We appreciate you guys for rocking with us. We don't want to keep our brother too long because we are big on family. Our brother just got back last night. We want to make sure we spend some time with his family before he comes back to Dallas for his rehab. Real quick, comment. Hey, let everybody know what you got going on, where to follow you at, 
You know what I mean? Because we, yeah. we want everybody to let you to, to know what you got going on because we yeah. really live by that once a raid, always a raid. We want everybody to follow you on IG, Twitter, all that good shit. What you got going on, brother? Yeah, um, my IG is uh, G Conley, underscore G Conley 8. Twitter the same. Um, I got Facebook. I don't really be on there. I literally be on there to say stuff to my mom and family back home. Yeah. Uh, and then basically, like, like I said, I've been rehabbing and I do training out in Houston. But like I said, I really want to get this documentary uh, going. So if anybody does a documentary film or anything, because I know this producer dude was talking about trying to do one, but he was talking crazy prices. I'm like, bro, I ain't got that. So bro, basically, I'm going to have to do some organic shit. We got some people to live. No, 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 bro, bro call, call me tomorrow. Like, real yeah. talk. Call me. Because, like, I, I, bro, you didn't know this. I never mentioned it to you, but I, I did music yeah. for 20 years, bro. Like, yeah. like. I got guys around me that that does outstanding work, and yeah. I'll be like, "This my guy, bro. We ain't nah. We not doing that shit, bro. So yeah. look, reach out to me and, and, and let's rock. We not like, yeah, nah, nah. That yeah. that story needs to be heard, and you yeah. shouldn't be overcharged for that type of story because everybody needs to hear that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's yeah. like that's pretty much free game. That's yeah, free that's game. what I'm saying. I'm really trying to do that and make a book and literally go around and speak in the schools. Like I said, schools, jails communities anything like just to understand like the shit and it may not even be just for football players or anything it's just to understand a journey that i went through and mentally what i went through and to just be a positive influence on anybody try to change one person's life you know what i'm saying yeah. hey hey before we get out of here hey waste it man does grew have anything to say to uh the comment i don't know man i mean I mean, I mean, I don't know if you want to even talk to that guy, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not the real, not the real, not not the real group. Nah, 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 we talking about? <laughs> oh. Hey, man, look, Gary, man, how you doing, man? Man, you know, yeah, thinking, that fucking corny. I was, I was thinking, man, I wanted to apologize to you, man, for being a fucking dumpster fire, man. I was sitting around, man. I was talking to Paul. Hey, you literally, look, he sound like, bro. <laughs> I tell you something, man. Sitting around with Paulie G the other day, man. He was eating a half a pizza, man. And I said, hey, Paulie, man, no more. No more. He said, I want one more. <laughs> Fucking ate a whole pie right in front of me, man. But let me be honest with you, man. <laughs> yeah. hey, man. Hey, man, real, real quick, man. Hey, graphic, man. Let me, let me just talk to Con, man. Con, man. I fucked up, man. I'm sorry, man. And I'm going to tell you something, man. Next time I get a <laughs> shot, I'm going to bring you in. I'm going to stab you in the back the same way I did anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, so hey con man, just if you remember this from practice, man. Knock on wood if you're with me, man. <laughs> man, I hate it when he said that damn shit. <laughs> Knock on wood, like man, shut your eyes up. Man, hear that shit. My yeah, brother, really man. Like, bro, bro. We crazy. we appreciate you so much, man, for pulling up on us. And like we said, we you have a home here. Anytime you want to talk, man. We're always here to rock, man. The nation is behind you. Um, me and Wasted are behind you. But anything that you need from us, bro, you please, please, yeah, please man. reach out. If you have some thoughts, you just like, look, I want to talk some shit. Yeah. You, you, got, you, got, you got a platform over here to just come over here and shoot the shit. Um, yeah. Once again, shout out to everybody here in the building tonight, man, rocking. Make sure you guys follow our brother on Twitter and on IG, man. G Conley, you already know what it is, man. Go support G Conley 8. Yeah, underscore G Conley 8, yep. There we go. We Support it. our guy. Hey, hit me when you get back in town too, brother. So yeah, for sure, man. You know what appreciate I mean? y'all having me on too, man. Appreciate the real conversation and the genuine people that y'all are, for sure. Nah, man, we appreciate you for being here, man. You know what I mean? That means a lot to us. And, you know, we're, we're fans yeah. of your work. But we, but to be real with you, I'm more of a fan of the human being. Yeah, same, yeah. bro. Same, bro. I mean, at the end of the day, man, football, we love the game. We, You know, you, you played the game at the highest level. You love the game. We love watching it. We love, you know, being around it. At the end of the yeah. day, man, it's all about life. Yeah. Like, that's the that's the reason why him and I are, you know, Graf and, and I, it's the same kind of thing. It's like the first time yeah. I talked to him, bro, we've been like this ever since, yeah. bro. Married, yeah. kids, same, set, lot, you know, our, our stuff lined up with yeah. morals, responsibilities, your priorities. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and when you find people around you that, that, that fit that, yeah. we want to keep them around, man. And, and yeah, kind yeah. of, bro, like, Outside of your football career, bro, I'm going to tell you right now, I seen you yesterday, bro. Everything lines up, man. So like I said, bro, it's it's an honor. It's a privilege. 
And um, you know, my son, he, he wants another, he wants he wants another get back. <laughs> he, he, he gonna cook me like that, man, forever, man. You know what I mean? Hey, 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 guess what? We're gonna bring you a prime too. Yeah. <laughs> Just pour that shit out when Elijah yeah. turns his head around. Yeah, he was it's getting for that. Yeah. Hey, you gonna, we're gonna get that thing. He's like, he said the prime. He said, Oh, now he wanna do that last rep. <laughs> Yo, Lacey, you didn't see it, bro. Elijah was <sighs> I said, yeah, You want that prime? Die. He said. He said, oh, yeah, the prime. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> over it, man. Over it. But, hey, man, my brother, man, once again, man, appreciate you. Hey, and call, please call me tomorrow, man. I want to yeah. talk to you about the documentary because I do have some guys yeah. in the business, man, that would, uh, that would love to yeah. rock with you on that, man. So, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? Hey, hey, everybody in the nation, man, real quick, give your kudos, give your flowers, man, to our, our former first-round pick. And... Put some prayers in the air for our guy to get back into the league because he's yeah, still right. young and he still has a lot left in the tank. With that yeah, being man. said, man, shout out to our brother, yes, Gary sir, Conley. Man. We're going to play this. We're going to play this outro and we outro. Salute y'all. One. Sanctioned by the new founding fathers and America, a nation reborn. May God be with you all.